What is happening, everybody? MG here. MG Covers bringing you a brand new sports handicapping video. Title of today's video, Major League Baseball Preview for April the 5th, 2024. Super excited about baseball. Uh, wasn't the case uh, many years ago, but this is now my best model, best sport. Had a great year last year. So in this video, I'm going to give you all my lines for today's game, some leans, as well as just an overall basic strategy for handicapping baseball. If you're watching this video for the first time, greatly appreciate you subscribing to the channel. Really try to put out uh, good content. So if you're looking to improve, get better at sports betting, I generally don't do a lot of uh, previews like this, but we're going to for this video. So there's a ton of content on how to improve as a sports handicapper. Subscribe to the channel. Watch a lot of videos. You'll get better at handicapping. If you want to follow me on social media, MG covers, cover spell with a Z. Give out a ton of con content on Instagram as well. Sometimes some uh, leans and freebies as well. All right, so let's dive into this. We just premiered the model yesterday, made it available to clients. I actually started wagering. We had our first win of the season, had Cleveland at plus 138, and I think it's closed at some books around plus 150. They won and going to basically explain how I'm handicapping. So, before we actually get into the lines, let's talk about baseball and understanding because this is as is really important to understand looking at baseball from the macro. There are three parts to handicapping baseball. You have hitting, very important. You have starting pitching, very important. And you have relief pitching, also important. Now, let's take a look at starting pitching and hitting. Many years ago, when I say many years ago, I used to say – maybe three, four years ago, I would say good hitting beats good pitching. That's true, but however, good pitching can also be good hitting. So you can't say that's true on either side. Um, it, it, there's a lot of factors that factor into that. So that's how you look at hitting and pitching. Relief pitching, good relief, a relief, a good bullpen cannot win games for you. However, a bad bullpen can lose games for you. And let me give you an interesting uh, scenario. If you remember, I can't remember exactly when the Washington Nationals won the World Series. Was that three years ago? can't remember exactly. But in the beginning part of the season, at the All-Star break, the Washington Nationals, who went on to win the World Series that year, at the All-Star break, statistically, they were on pace to have the worst bullpen in Major League Baseball history. So they had a good pitching staff. They got a good hitting staff. I mean, a good hitting team, but they were losing games. Why? Because the bullpen was underperforming, giving up a ton of runs. Um, so that's sort of important to consider when you're handicapping. So in essence, the lesson to be learned here is you don't want to wager on bad bullpens. Okay, teams that have bad bullpens, you don't want to invest in that because they might have, and what you'll see when you're handicapping, the team might be pretty decent at hitting. They might have a really good pitcher on the mound. They got a bull, bad bullpen. That's going to increase your chances of a loss. So that's sort of how you factor those three elements. So that being said, I want to show you the strategy that we used last year. I may have showed this in a previous video, but last year, here's how I did it. I would just focus on, I use the Alto concept, which is focusing on the top 10 teams in the model. So we would look at the top 10 teams via the model, and if they were plus 120 or greater, it would be a play. And we had just crazy success with this, almost hard to believe. It went 89 and 71, which is 55%, and was up plus 47.24 units, and that's grading one play, one unit. Now, this is important. I think that's probably the best this model will ever perform. And if you understand sports handicapping, one important concept to grasp is regression. What that means is, do I think this model is going to hit 55% and 47 units this year? Absolutely not. I mean, it could, but it's more likely to regress. It's just not going to, that's just understanding numbers. But I still believe this is a very effective way to play, and it's how I'm going to play um, as well, meaning yesterday we had one game. Cleveland was, I can't remember where they were ranked in my power rankings, maybe like six, and they were a dog above plus 120, so it was a play, and they won. So 
that's really the approach. Now, we will play other games as well, and I'm going to kind of give you that strategy as well when we look at uh, my power ranking. So let's dive into this. Start with Toronto and the Yankees. You can see there uh, both teams. Let me pull it up on this side on my phone. It's easier to read it here. All right, so Toronto and Yankees, we have that as a – both teams are a dog, so really no edge there. Oakland, Detroit, we have both teams as an underdog, no, no, no edge there. Now, interesting enough, you have Dodgers and Chicago, minus 175 my line and Chicago is minus 170. So we have both teams as the favorite. Now, if you go over to the books, Dodgers are minus 174, depending on the book. Chicago is the dog. Now, one thing I realized with baseball, technically that's a 50-50 game. And if you don't know what a 50-50 game is, that means both sides have equal um, opportunity to win the game, hence the name 50-50 game. And the way that I handicap that, if it's a 50-50 game, it favors the dog, meaning if you can win 50% of those, the lines plus 120 or greater, you'll, you will be profitable long-term. However, the way that I handicap baseball is I want to have an advantage in all three aspects, meaning I want to have a hitting advantage, I want to have a pitching advantage, and I want to make sure that I'm not wagering on a, a poor bull, bullpen. So in this particular example, not saying not to do this, I'm just telling you my approach, I passed on these games because both Dodgers and – let me pull this up. Yep, both Dodgers are in the top 10 in my power ranking. So if you remember from that previous video, the Alto concept, if we have two teams in the top 10, we don't, we don't play them because I have Dodgers really good hitting team, uh, Chicago really good hitting team, both bullpens probably average. So for me, I want to have an average in all three, so I'll, I'll pass. That's how I would handicap. But if you did make me play this game, obviously there's value with Chicago. So let's go back, and we'll kind of keep going here. Tampa Bay, Colorado, plus 180, plus 190. So that's basically a 50-50 game, so no edge there. Pittsburgh and Baltimore. Pittsburgh, pretty good hitting team this year. They're minus 185 by line. Baltimore is plus 112. We'll take a look at the actual sportsbook line here. And you will see Baltimore is actually the favorite there, uh, depending on the book. Minus 132, minus 138. Some books have it in the minus 129. Pittsburgh is the dog. So obviously there's a lean there with Pittsburgh. And technically the way I would do that via the first method I introduced, if Pittsburgh is plus 120 or greater, it would be basically an automatic play. All right, so scrolling along, let's go back over here to the power rankings. Uh, we have San Diego at minus 165, San Francisco plus 165. So that's a lean towards San Diego, depending on the line. And we get pretty good uh, value there, plus 105, plus 101 with San Diego. Now, the, basically the way I handicapped it, obviously if it was plus 120 or greater, it would be an automatic play. But I would still play games like this contingent upon – having a starting pitching advantage. So basically via the model, we have a hitting advantage with Pittsburgh. We also have a bullpen advantage with Pittsburgh. And the next step would be, I would assess if we have a starting pitching advantage. Well, this early in the season, most pitchers have pitched one to two games so far. So you really can't, you don't have enough statistical data, but technically speaking, that would be a lean on Pittsburgh. Meaning we know we have a starting we have a hitting advantage and a relief, uh, a bullpen advantage. Um, so we're only missing one part. So that's basically how I would handicap it. But for today, giving you a lean, definitely a lean towards Pittsburgh there. So moving along, we have Mets plus one city plus 175, Cincinnati minus 160. So we have a lean on Cincinnati here. Let's check out the line. Um, pretty good line movement there. I really don't look at line movement. What will happen with line movement in baseball more times than not, the line will move in favor of the, quote, perceived better pitcher. And a classic example of that was that game yesterday with Cleveland. We played Cleveland at plus 138. Line moved against us all the way up to plus 159. Now, it did come back down later in favor in Cleveland, but 
the way that I not saying it's wrong, but for me, the way I handicap, I generally don't um, factor in line movement simply because we play a lot of dogs and more times than not, the line will move against me. So another reason in this particular example, this is basically a bottom up approach with the dogs for me. So normally I just sent this to clients yesterday in a bottom up approach, you would want to play early because if the model's good, the line will move in favor of you or it should, if the model's good, but baseball is just a completely different beast. The line more times than not in baseball will move in favor of the better pitcher. So that's a very important uh, concept to understand because what you'll notice is if it's going to move in favor of the better pitcher, you might want to go look and say, Hey, is this a good hitting team that this pitcher is going against? So if the line is quote overvalued on the pitching side, you're going to get a ton of value going opposite of that pitcher. If that is a quote, good hitting team, and maybe they have a good bullpen as well. So something to consider. So definitely a lean there in favor of San Diego. So let's continue on. We have Philadelphia, Washington, both that's a 50, 50 game, both dogs. So we don't really look at uh, playing those. And then finally, Arizona and Atlanta, both are favorites via my model. And let's talk briefly about that game and understanding how lines are structured for the book. So again, Atlanta, I sent this out on Instagram, the book's based lines on what they consider the public's perception of that team. So it's basically like fair market value, so to speak. So the public basically perceives Atlanta to be pretty good. And because Strider's on the mound, obviously that line's going to be be favored heavily in favor of Atlanta, basically shaded heavily towards Atlanta. So yes, there is value in Arizona, but going back to the premise of how I handicap, I generally don't like to play against another good hitting team because that brings, because we want predictability. Again, I want a hitting advantage. I want a starting pitching advantage and I want a relief, a a bullpen advantage as well. And in this particular game, even though there's value on Arizona via my model, I still don't like to play those games. All right, let's go back to the power rankings here. White Sox, Kansas City, 50-50 game there. Houston, Texas, again, you can see both teams are favorites via my model. So, again, that would be a game we wouldn't consider, even though pretty decent line there for the books. Opened up, Houston is minus 105 opening, and then it's shot all the way up to 134 and 130 more than likely because the starting pitching is perceived to be better. Okay, Seattle and Milwaukee. Seattle plus 147, Milwaukee minus 120. Let's check out the books line here. Milwaukee minus 115 to minus 117. So Milwaukee is basically the 10th best team via my power ranking. So that would be a lean in favor of Milwaukee. And again, the way that I would cap it in that particular case, even though they're not plus 120 or greater, if we have a pitching advantage, but again, like I mentioned previously, we can't really assess pitching this early in the season, but definitely a lean on Milwaukee. And then finally, the last game, Boston and Angels. Again, both teams are dogs, so we would pass on that. So again, so just to sort of summarize this, the approach you want to have you want to look at again a good hitting team can beat a good pitcher and a good pitcher can beat a good hitting team so really the approach even if you didn't have a model per se would you would want to look from the look at it from the value perspective right for example like atlanta is a great example they've overvalued atlanta hitting they've overvalued um, Atlanta's pitching. I'm not saying Atlanta, Atlanta, Atlanta's my team. They are a good hitting team. Strider's a great pitcher, but they're not factoring in the Arizona bats. So from a value perspective, where's the value? The value is on the Arizona. So I- anytime in sports betting, that's what you're looking for. What, what aspect is being overvalued, right? And so wh- whatever side or aspect is being overvalued, the value is going to come on the, um, opposite side of that. So, Hope that video helps and got a ton of content coming uh, related to stat models. I got a really, really intriguing concept that I discovered yesterday. Didn't discover it, but just sort of revisited. I'm going to make a separate video about that. 
if you want access to these power rankings that come out daily every day before 10 a.m we have major league baseball going on uh we got the final four i'll post my picks on instagram this weekend we also have soccer and finishing up with nba 50 bucks a month you get access to all my lines as well as all of my coaching videos on the website we have over 150 coaching videos how to improve your sports handicapping if you want access to everything I just mentioned, in addition to all my plays, 100 bucks a month, the best value, instead of paying 100 each month, you can pay 500 bucks one time for an entire year. You save about $600 that way, and it's like getting an associate's degree in sports handicapping for only 500 bucks for one year. Link to join in the description box. Good luck today, and talk to you guys soon. Peace.